Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for your traditional Monday morning look at the Chelsea news headlines. Today we're going to be talking Thomas Tuchel. This one looks a little bit messy. We're going to look back a bit on that. We're going to talk the left-back situation regarding Cucurella, Ben Chilwell and the emerging Ian Matson at Burnley. And we're also going to talk about a Chelsea signing, which in the middle of March, you might be thinking... Who the bloody hell have they gone and signed in March? The transfer window, Mr. Benson, is in fact closed. Well, it's closed, but we have gone and snapped up a 17-year-old Jamaican striker who goes by the name of Duhuan Richards, or Dujuan, Duhuan. We're going to go and call it that for now, who joins us in November when he turns 18 years old. He was recently playing at Newcastle. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk a little bit about an interview that was done with Julian Calcio and Simon Phillips talking about Chelsea's Serie A targets in the summer. But I first of all want to begin with the story regarding Thomas Tuchel because we don't want to spend too much time looking backwards, but interesting developments have come out from Bild, which is a German news outlet, saying that Thomas Tuchel was sacked by Chelsea for mysterious off-the-field reasons and because players lost respect for him. An email from his ex-wife claims, dot, 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 as he seeks an injunction to stop her publishing it. This doesn't give us the exact reasons as to why there was off-the-field antics that was impacting Thomas Tuchel, which led to him being sacked. But I do find it interesting, as a result of off-the-field behaviours and goings-on in his life, players lost respect for him. It's difficult from this tweet from Simon Phillips to decipher whether it was off-the-field reasons which led players to lose respect for him. But when Thomas Tuchel is trying to have an injunction to stop his ex-wife publishing the information, you wonder if there were maybe some leaks and rumours going around the Chelsea dressing room about something that Thomas Tuchel might have done that had nothing to do with football that then impacted the respect amongst different personnel within the squad. And as a result of that, the club just sacked Thomas Tuchel before something could have blown out of proportion. And then Chelsea are involved in a massive hysteria about their manager going through a divorce. It doesn't, to me, sound like an ideal situation. And when we look back on Thomas Tuchel, the early stages under Todd Bowley, when we started this season and you see Tuchel walking out onto the field and for whatever reason, he doesn't shake the hand of Todd Bowley on the pitch, you just wonder, when we look at these so-called reasons, just how deep this was. And I think we can all be, we're all human here, we can all understand that if you're going through a divorce, even a breakup, if you're if you're young or whatever age you are, going through a breakup is never nice. It's a big change that happens in one's life where you go from being happy and then you break up because you're not happy. That's usually the meat and potatoes of everything. We don't know the exact reasons right now. And if Tuchel is trying to place an injunction on his ex-wife, it means that he doesn't want people to know either what was going on. So maybe the players lost respect for him because of something that had nothing to do with football. Crazy how the world works, but Thomas Tuchel was sacked for mysterious off-the-field reasonings. This has come from the Daily Mail, so we could also be careful as to how much we read into this, but I did want to report it today because it's been doing the rounds and it could say a lot about the approach of Bowley here because if something happens that can jeopardise the, the footballing morality, I guess you could say, when it comes to respect for players and a manager, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that we don't get to know as fans. And in the modern game, the media being the way they are, it's almost impossible, in a sense, for us to not find out some of these things. So if it was that big, and Chelsea have managed to keep it under wraps, Tuchel until now has managed to keep it under wraps, then maybe it was best that we didn't allow something off the field to continue to jeopardise what was happening on the field. But in my opinion, we started to see cracks between Bowley's relationship with Tuchel right from the get-go, from the comments made during pre-season, the, I guess you could say, the lack of camaraderie, when Tuchel walks on the pitch at Stamford Bridge at the beginning of the season. But yeah, at this moment in time, that's just, well, I don't, I don't really know what we're hoping for here. There's nothing really to go with this. But yeah, that if that's the reason Tuchel was sacked, then 
at least we get some kind of clarity for those of us that were like, what did he do? Like, is it really that bad? The results are that bad that we have to sack a manager who won us the Champions League. But we're going to move on now into the next story of the day. And this is a positive one. Jamaican talent, Duhuan, we're just going to call him that for the sake of anything. Whisper is the nickname. Richards has signed with Chelsea yesterday. I think this was two days ago. But he will join the club directly in November when he will turn 18 years old. Next one to join Chelsea will be Ecuadorian gem, 2007, born Kendry Pires, as already revealed in February. I can't believe that we're talking about players that were actually born seven years into this millennium. It does make me feel incredibly old at a mere age of 28 years old. But once again, Chelsea are doing work. It is also reported that the reason Chelsea managed to get this deal done for Richards, who was born in 2005, was down to director Joe Shields being crucial in the negotiations. He was on trial, I believe, at Newcastle United. And then, uh, well, rumours go round when players are on trials. You can see that, obviously, some players have a lot more talent than others. Chelsea willing to take the gamble on a 17-year-old who currently plays from for Phoenix All-Stars in the US. Chelsea have taken the gamble here. And I think Joe Shields is going to have a lot more to say in terms of helping Chelsea push these deals forward for young players. Because at the moment, Chelsea are linked with Romeo Lavia at Southampton. And when we look forward to this one and speculate whether or not that kind of deal could go through, you can imagine that Joe Shields, who has a relationship with Lavia from his time at Southampton, will also be key in bringing players like him forward. Chelsea keep on getting these business deals done for youngsters off the field. And obviously, we're not going to see a lot of the fruits of the labour of this work for a few years because a lot of these players probably won't feature for Chelsea for a while. But once again, signing young talents, I'm all for it. And we've done a great job with that so far in the Todd Bowley era. The next thing I want to talk about here is Ben Chilwell being wanted by Manchester City. Chelsea obviously signed Mark Cucurella last summer. When we talk about the ages of Chilwell and Cucurella, 25 and 26 years old, there is also, very quickly coming up in the ranks behind them, Ian Matson, who has had a magnificent season for Burnley. Four goals, five assists in 30 appearances, countless man of the match awards. He's in the team of the week virtually every single week. Burnley are running away with the championship. They've currently got 80 points. They're going to win the league. They are a class above everybody else under the stewardship of Vincent Company. Ian Matson, what do Chelsea do with Ian Matson? A lot of this will depend on just how interested Manchester City are in Ben Chilwell. For me, this is a no-brainer for Chelsea. Ben Chilwell should not be sold to Manchester City whatsoever. When we look at the last couple of performances from Chilwell, he is getting back to that level which we were talking about prior to that big injury, where we consider Chilwell to be one of the best wingbacks slash fullbacks in the world. Chelsea cannot be going and strengthening Manchester City. The only way that I would see this being a decent idea is if Man City come in and offer something stupendous for Chilwell. And in order for me to make a point here, that figure has got to be like 80, 85 million plus for Chelsea to even consider it. And the reason we could consider it is because of Ian Matson. Ian Matson is a seriously talented footballer can also play slightly further forward, so whether we've got the three at the back, can play as a wing back, he could even be used in the left midfield position, predominantly a left back. And Chelsea are very lucky to have a player like this. And I think with Matson for his development, I think staying at Burnley in the Premier League, as he's obviously been a mainstay in that team this season, give him another loan in the Premier League. Don't start shipping off Ben Chilwell to Manchester City, who are the team that Chelsea need to be competing with, to be able to win trophies in England. Mark Cucurella, last couple of games, we started to see why Guardiola wanted him. Why Chelsea have gone out and spent so much money to bring him at the club in the first place. If I get my ideal outcome as a result of this trio of players that we're thinking about here, Chilwell, Cucurella and Matson, keep Matson on loan at Burnley. We want to keep giving him that opportunity. The Championship, very different to the Premier League. We saw it with Rhys James, but... Rhys James made that step up. We're beginning to see that Matson could be on that same level 
where the step up to the Premier League might not phase him whatsoever. And instead of doing what we did with Livramento, Tarek Lamptey, which is where we sell them for stupidly low prices to Premier League opposition, and then we see them thrive, keep Ian Matson at Chelsea, keep him at Burnley next season on loan, and we've got Ben Chilwell and Marco Corella, two very, very astute left-back options at the club. With Gusto coming next season, he's the backup for Reese James. Two quality players in those positions. Chelsea don't need to worry. We can focus on different areas of the pitch, which leads us into the last story of the day, which is a tweet here, once again, from Get Italian Football News. An interview was conducted between Julian Calcio, who spoke to Simon Phillips about Chelsea and their potential Serie A targets, including Victor Osimhen, Denzel Dumfries and Raphael Liao. When we talk about the exodus of players that is likely to happen at Chelsea this summer, a lot of the players that we're talking about potentially leaving are wingers. So if Chelsea are going to be selling Callum Hudson-Odoi, Christian Pulisic, Hakim Ziyech, three names that have been touted to be leaving the club in the summer, then as much as Mikhailo Mudrik's come in, Raheem Sterling only had a year at the club, Chelsea have signed Oni Madwike too, but we can't just not replace these players that are coming in. At the moment, we've got a bloated squad, and a lot of the reasons why having a bloated squad is a problem is because of game time. When we look at Chelsea's transfer strategy under new ownership, we've gone out and splashed hundreds of millions on first-team players, but we're also building an arsenal of players from with the younger years for the future. But I do think a player like Raphael Liao could still be such a vital signing for Chelsea. If a player like that is available, there's still a lot of rumours about whether he'll sign a new deal at AC Milan. He's an explosive talent. He would absolutely kill it in the Premier League at Chelsea. And I like the fact that we are still being linked with these kind of players. Denzel Dumfries, Malo Gusto's joining. I don't really see the need to bring Denzel Dumfries to Chelsea. Victor Osimhen, I've spoken about him here on the YouTube channel. I'll leave a video where I talk about him as a card on the screen. Watch this space. It is the middle of March now, so rumours will start floating around between now and the end of the season. Expect Chelsea to have this exodus that we will believe that will happen this summer with players leaving the club. But at the same time, we still need to sign people. And I think the more leave, the more high-quality individuals will try and bring in. The rumours at the minute are four new players could join the club this summer, and that doesn't include... Malo Gusto and Christopher Nkunku. So watch this space. This has been your news video for a Monday morning. Come on, you blues.